What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp Essentials tutorial. So this week we're going to talk about using SketchUp shadow and light settings to create realistic shadows. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So first thing we're going to note is just the location of the shadows options um, in your SketchUp model. So you can find the shadow options in your tray in the section labeled shadows. So if you can't see that section for whatever reason, uh, just go up to your window, default tray, make sure shadows is checked, and then come down here and just find the option labeled shadows over here on the right side. So just like this, then you can click this little arrow to kind of expand it. And this is where you're gonna be able to come in here and adjust your different shadow settings. So first thing we're gonna talk about is how to turn the shadows on, because this is actually something that I struggled with a little bit, because uh, it doesn't really look like the button for shadows is actually a button. So if you look in here, if you look in the upper left hand corner, it says show or hide shadows right here. So if you click on this, it's gonna turn shadows on in your model. And for a long time, I didn't realize this was a button. And so I was down here clicking on use sun for shading and these other options and none of them were really working. So anyway, to turn those on, you're just gonna click this box right here. And so you can see how when I click this box, um, basically what it's doing is it's coming in here and you can see how now this object is casting a shadow on the ground. So basically this is simulating the sun and um, casting shadows based on these settings in here. So let's talk about how to adjust those a little bit because these settings, uh, if, your model, if your model is geolocated, these are gonna actually be geographically correct shadows. So in this case, if this was geolocated, this would actually be simulating the shadows at, it looks like 625 AM on June 27th. So you can come in here and you can adjust those to see how the shadows would look at different times of day. Like for example, if I come in here and I click this slider, you can see how my shadows are changing based on where the sun would be. So you can see how my rail right here is casting a shadow just like this. Um, and then also you can say, all right, what if this was October? Then what would this look like at 8.54 a.m.? Or what would this look like at noon? So you can come in here and you can adjust those shadows accordingly um, based on the way you want them to look. So the other thing I want to note here is you can also come in here and you can adjust the light and the dark of your shadows. So you can adjust how light your light sections are as well as how dark your dark sections are. So you can see how when I drag this all the way to the left and the light all the way to the right, um, the light sections are really bright, the shadow sections are really dark. So you can kind of use this to adjust this and make the, uh, the difference between the light and the dark a little less harsh if you want to. So you can come in here and you can adjust all of that different stuff um, in order to get the look you're looking for in your model. And uh, you want to be careful because you don't want to set you don't want to set your lights and your darks to the same to the same setting because then you can see there is no shadow; it's just all dark. So anyway, you can come in here and you can make that look the way that you want. And the other thing I want to note is these shadow settings are stored in your scene. So whatever your current scene is, um, this is where your shadow settings are going to be stored. So in this case, I've called this scene one. And you can see how over here in the scene section, scene one has this checkbox for shadow settings. Basically it's saying save the properties of your current shadow settings in scene one. So what we're gonna do since we've adjusted this is we're just gonna come in here, we're gonna right click and we're gonna click update. And now if I turn my shadows off, I move away from this, all that different stuff, and then I click back on scene one, you can see it takes me back to my my model right here and it also takes me back to what my shadow settings were when I click that update button. So you can store your shadow settings in your scenes just like that. And next thing I want to talk about is so we've got another scene over here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to turn on shadows and you can see how what that's doing is I've got this kind of like mesh with a bunch of round holes cut in it. You can see how this is casting light through, through this um, mesh piece right here in order to cast this on the wall. So, and you can adjust this and you can see how this shadow adjusts based on what time of day it would be. So in this case, um, later in the day, it's gonna cast a shadow the other way, but earlier in the day, it's gonna cast a shadow across your kind of hallway just like this. So, and again, I can do the same thing. I can update this scene 
and then now it's going to store the uh, shadow settings that I had in this scene. So I can come back to that later on. The other thing I want to note, um, especially on something like this that has a ton of geometry involved, is you want to keep shadows off most of the time. Unless you're actively using them, you do not want to have shadows turned on, because that is probably the number one thing that's going to slow down your SketchUp model, is having those shadows turned on. Um, so turn those off until you need them, because um, it's just a whole bunch of extra stuff that SketchUp has to come in here and... Uh, and figure out in addition to like rendering all your geometry and everything else. So um, that's always the first tip I give when people are saying their model's slow. The first thing I ask is, did you turn the shadows off? So, so the next thing I want to talk about is if you look over here, I've, I've got basically, I've got an object up in the air and I've also got a plane up in the air. And uh, so what that's going to do is when I turn my shadows on, um, you can see how this object is casting a shadow on this plane, but then this plane is casting a shadow on the ground. So anytime you have a model, like for example, if I was to draw another rectangle just like this over here, it's going to cast a shadow on the ground if the box for display on ground is checked. So the ground is basically the... Uh, it's basically the plane where the origin or where the axes intersect. So the ground is always going to be at this level, no matter where up or down your object is. So like if I was to take this object and move it down below just like this, you can see how as soon as I move it below, it doesn't cast that shadow anymore. So you need to be kind of aware of where your stuff is on the up down uh, or on the blue axis just like this. Because otherwise, you know, you can see this is casting a shadow, but it's casting it not at the base of this object. It's casting it further over on the ground plane so that's something to be aware of and then the other thing to be aware of is if you've got a model where your uh, ground plane isn't on this base level right here um, you're just gonna want to uncheck this box for on ground just like this so if you have a plane for whatever reason that's up above this flat plane right here just uncheck on ground and make sure on faces is checked because you can see how I can either I can't uncheck all of these while the shadows are on. So, but if I uncheck on ground, it's automatically going to go to on faces. So, as long as the shadows are on, you have to have it casting shadows on something. Um, and I haven't really used the from edges option, so honestly, I'm not a hundred percent sure what it does or what it changes. Um, it's never really been relevant for what I've been doing. So, anyway, so now I'm going to take you over to an actual like geolocated house scene. So what I did is I brought in um, some um, terrain from Google Maps and I brought this in just like this and now if you take a look at this house uh, right now there's no shadows turned on whatsoever. So there's one other option I want to talk about real quick and that's this use sun for shading option. So the use sun for shading option will adjust the way that your faces look based on where the sun would be. So you can see how if I move this just like this, the lighting of my model changes, but it's not actually casting shadows. So you can see like how your building would be lit at like three o'clock in the afternoon or whatever. You can see how your lighting changes depending on what, what time of day you select. Um, but it's not gonna cast shadows just like that. So that's a lot easier on your uh, on your processing and all of that stuff. So if you just kind of want to generally adjust the lighting in your model, you can definitely do that using just the use sun for shading option. But um, the last thing I'm going to talk about here real quick is using geolocated models to see what your shadows are going to look like. So this object, based on the fact that I brought a map in, is now geolocated. And you can see down here in the corner, um, you can see how it says this model is accu accurately geolocated. It's got a latitude and a longitude. Uh, it's got a location and all of that different stuff. So it's actually in here um, and SketchUp is treating it like it has a real world location. And what that means is when you start dealing with your shadows, what's going to happen is these are real world shadows. So based on where this sits and everything else, SketchUp is actually calculating what the shadows would look like in this location at this time. So it's a really powerful tool for like seeing um, like how vegetation is going to cast shadows on your house and stuff like that at a certain time of day. So you can see how um, as I drag this off to the side just like this, you can see you're going to get some kind of shade over these windows if you put these big trees in here. Um, you can also use this to figure out in December, if it's snowy, for example, 
what time you're going to start getting sun like on your front porch or stuff like that. So you can use that to uh, figure out all these different things. You can also use this to figure out kind of optimum home placement and stuff like that. So if I was to come in here and I was to rotate this object just like this, if I was to come in here and I was to rotate this object and I was to mess with my shadows, I can see that since I kind of have this, I think facing north now, you can see that your house is gonna cast shadows um, on any kind of paving or anything like that that's on the front of your building so you know where I live in Colorado that's a huge problem because if you cast shade on your face just like this and this is never gonna melt so what will happen is you'll get snow and you'll just continually get snow and on the warm days it'll never melt off because the Sun will never hit it because your house is blocking it so you can see how all the way through like one or two o'clock this is casting a shadow on these front steps and stuff like that so it's kind of an indicator that you're gonna have snow issues and other stuff so you you can definitely come in here and you can use this to um, really start figuring some stuff like that out figure out like optimum home placement and stuff like that so it's a really powerful tool for that kind of thing um, you can also when you export your models to like uh, Twilight render or rendering software uh, the shadows should go with that you can use these daylight settings to kind of adjust how the shadows are gonna look in your renderings and stuff as well so anyway, this was just kind of a quick overview of the shadow and light settings in SketchUp. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Are you using these? Um, did you know about some of this stuff? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. That just helps me keep bringing you great SketchUp content. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.